Hey guys, um, so I'm going to do something different today. I want to start talking about things in the sea a little bit. Um, and I've, I was talking about this a little bit in the, uh, the chat yesterday, um, in the Telegram group, about um, the benefits of starting with a gi rather than starting no gi. And the thing about that is, is that um, when you are working with a gi, you have grips that you can hold on to. Right, so you're not fighting for control nearly as much as you would if you were um, if you're going in a no gi situation. So you don't have to deal with the slipperiness as much. And the reason why I think that's really, really important, um, especially when you're beginning out, is that you want to be able to start getting uh, techniques that actually work uh, a lot earlier on, if that makes any sense. So the thing about that is, is that if you are um, constantly uh, slipping on on Techniques and you're like, oh, this technique is just never working for me. For me, you're never going to feel like um, that the technique works, and then you stop going for it, right? And so, by starting out with the gi, for one, you're going to start recognizing the opportunities for that submission to to actually happen, and, and um, you'll be able to get it, right? If that makes any sense. So. You know, instead of slipping around and not be able to grab anything, now I've got something solid that I can grab onto. And again, from a, a self-defense situation, the reason why geese are what they are and they're so heavy is that they don't tear. I can pull on this all day and it's not going to tear on me. Um, this gi is five years old. Um, this one down here is a year and a half, two years old. And then uh, my other Tatami Nova is um, six years old. I've had it since I began. And um, and they're still holding up. Like um, my first white gi, which I got at a martial arts store um, that I absolutely hate. Um, it's got some of this is starting to uh, peel up and get threadbare a little bit. But you know, I've had that for you know six and a half, seven years. So um, gi's hold up for for a lot. Whereas if you were to be wrestling in a t-shirt um, or button-up shirt, you know, the buttons are going to pop off. Your uh, the shirt might tear. Um, but the thing is, is like, I can use the exact same techniques with a t-shirt as I could with a gi, um, but I can't do them over and over again. And so that's going to be the main difference there. So, you know, from a self-defense standpoint, I think training in a gi is much more valuable than, uh, training without one. Um, and, you know, but I, but I do think that there is validity in cross-training and doing both. So, when I get side control with the gi, right? I'm going to have my hand on your armpit here, and I'm just using a friction grip. I'm not holding onto the gi here, right? I've just got a nice little friction grip. My knees are at the shoulder and at the hip, so I'm really, really wide. I'm sitting my base back. I'm making sure that my pressure's on this side of the sternum, right? So, um, and I'm actually kind of inflating my chest and looking up a little bit so that, you know, inflating my chest into their side rather than trying to put my weight down on them because again you're gonna get rolled if you do that. So um, from uh, side control here, um, we do have certain things that we can do like um, like if I'm gonna go up into knee right, I'm gonna take this hand out, I'm gonna put my thumb into the collar here, right? And then I'm gonna grab onto the belt here. Um, you can grab onto the, the fabric, I actually kind of prefer the pants. Um, and a lot of times you're gonna have like these little holes that you can hold onto. The thing I like about the pants, is they have limited mobility to rotate around, right? Whereas if you grab onto the belt and the belt's a little bit loose, it can just kept start spinning around the person's body, right? Um, the thing about the uh, the skirt here, like you could grab the skirt and pull onto that, but again, it's going to have a little bit of play into it. But I think um, all these things are done. But generally, you know, we usually teach it as putting your fingers into the belt, and then I drop my elbow down to the ground. I have my thumb into the collar here, and I'm gonna pop up to knee right here. Now, once I get into knee ride, um, I can hold on to these, and if I really wanted to get somebody to like push on my knee to create that uh, keyhole for me to go for that uh, far side arm bar, I might do that. I might start pulling up on their collar and on their belt as well at the same time. And the reason why I do this is gonna create a lot of pressure right into their solar plexus, which can make them feel nauseous, it can make them uh, want to defend more. But for right now, I've got this hand down here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this hand off, and I'm gonna pet the back of their head. So I'm going palm up here, and then I'm gonna flip my grip so that I can get into the um, collar here. Now whenever we do a collar grip, guys, 
Um, we have a couple different positions that your hand can be in, right? We have a, a curl, we have a cast of the line, right? So point my thumb away, and then we have a hammer, right? We're, so we're very neutral here, or we have, I'm holding the tray like I'm serving at a restaurant. Now, this grip has absolutely no strength to it, and the problem with a lot of people is like, when they try to get really, really deep, they'll create, maybe not on this particular technique, but they will create that that uh, compromised wrist grip, and that will oftentimes make it so that they can't get the submission. Now, so I pet the back of the head, I'm gonna do a palm up, and then I'm gonna slide my fingers in, and I'm gonna grab here and here. Now, when I uh, pull him onto his side, I really need to, I'm gonna take my knee off, and I'm gonna pull him towards me, right? Now, so you guys can see this, I put my elbows together, and it's not just about putting your elbows together. What I find a lot of times when people are really kind of trying to do this uh, hammer choke here, and this would probably be my base more, but, um, but when they try to do this hammer choke, like a lot of times their elbows are really far apart. Um, and if we think about that, what's, where are we on the person's neck, right? So we want to get pressure evenly on this artery and on this artery when we come in on the sides. So if I have my elbows apart, right? I hope you guys can see that okay, right? But you can see there, they're not coming straight onto the neck, right? One's going downward, one is coming upward, and a lot of times this upper one's actually gonna end up on the face, and we don't want that. So what we want is that this bottom wrist here, which I'm flexing into a hammer grip, right? Hammer grip here, um, it's going to be straight, going straight across here, just like this, and I'm gonna position this elbow, and a lot of times I'll actually do this, right? I'm going um, with my elbow flared out this way, and then I tuck under here, right? So I'm going from here to here. So what I'm doing is I'm sliding across that collarbone and then cutting right into the neck here. So I get here, here. Now as I pull him onto his side, I'm gonna take my top elbow and I'm gonna drop it to the floor, and I'm going to try to bring my other elbow up. So a lot of times, I'm gonna look up to the ceiling, right? And this is a really, really fast choke here, right? Once you got that going you, and you are on the neck on both sides, you're gonna rip. So, one of the things is, is that you can totally get your hands too close here, right? So when I establish this first grip, right, it's kind of a little bit in from the side of their neck right, um, or right next to it. So I wanna get, here's your sternoclemasoid, uh, that's a big muscle right there, right? I don't wanna get it so that my, when I go for the choke, I'm pushing on the back of the neck, right? Because that's the one part of your neck that you absolutely can't choke. So, when I get into this position, I want my forearms to be angled like a little wedge at the front, right? So I've got that backwards here, right? So I want it to be cutting this way, not cutting that way. Right? So I'm not trying to put pressure on the spine, I want to put it on those arteries. And if you're too wide, you're going to be coming flat across the trachea and you don't want that either. So you want to find that um, position where basically like my forearms are hitting the sternoclemasoids on both sides and pivoting around that. So I'm here, I pull them off to the side, bring my elbows together, so I scoop under the jaw, I make sure that I'm on the neck on the other side, and then I start to look up. and. He will tap really fast to that. So that's going to be your uh, basic hammer choke from side control or rather from a knee ride.